Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah hamdan hamdan wa nashkuru syukran syukran wa na'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla wa may yudlil fala hadiya wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tasliman kathiran mazida Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbi zidna ilman wa rizqna fahman subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Allahumma waffiqna bi ilmi wa 'amali bima tuhib wa tarda Allahumma rizqni ikhlasa fil qawli wal amal I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may this the session be a means of salvation for the sins we have committed i mean i also pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for every single seconds and minutes where we invest in to listen to this session may it be a month a means for us to draw ourselves closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i also pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant me the ability to present and may he grant you the ability to understand whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever evil i would like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan alhamdulillah praise us and thank to be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us another opportunity to join in this topic of nurturing a vibrant muslim society during my last session i had the opportunity to discuss with everyone on some of the merits and the virtues of laylatul qadr where we encounter it every single year once a year during the blissful month of ramadan on one of the last 10 odd nights of ramadan and we went to the topic of what is qadr i try to explain to you on the technicality behind laila and then what is qadr and then i further did share with you that i will discuss with you on the intricate details of qadr which is believing in the divine decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that laylatul qadr is just not a night that night where it bridges us to every seconds of our life until we have another opportunity to meet another laylatul qadr in the following ramadan <coughs> but as we know many amongst us shy away from this topic well it is according to some others is politically uh, is inappropriate to discuss and this is the sixth article of faith where number one is believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and successively is to believe in his angels and succeeding which is to believe in his scriptures and succeeding which is a person in to believe in the prophets and messengers and then to believe in the day of judgment and finally to believe in qada and qadr the many amongst us have problem in addressing the topic and whenever the topic is addressed some amongst them feels that everything in our life is being controlled while some others states that you know we are able to control the things within ourselves as i have shared with you in my previous episode the decree generally it can be classified into two categories it can be classified into two categories one is decree within one's control which i did explain to you and the other is decree beyond control this is where we as muslims when we are able to embrace this four solutions in our life it would liberate it would liberate every single muslim mind now the fact that things majority of the things in my own life in your own life we are unable to control it even though we want it to be in the way we want it to be but it turns out to be something else 
And when we as a Muslim believe in these four principles, or we can put it as four solutions, then you will start to see that things around us will be much more better. Now, what are these four solutions? So in this session, I would like to further elaborate and emphasize on the topic of Qadr on its own. So that in when we meet, when we have the opportunity to meet the uh, Laylatul Qadr during the next Ramadan, at least when we are dedicating and devoting the action during that particular night, we will bear, we will then bear in our mind that whatever takes place after this, right? I know that I have these four principles or four solutions where I need to hold on, you know, firmly grip on in my life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continuously bless me, bestow me with his blessing throughout the different obstacles where I will need to surmount. Now, what are the four solutions? Number one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolute justice. Rather than asking, why me? Why not him? Why is it only happening to me? Why is it not happening to the that person, I plan this way. Why is it turned out to be that way? We as Muslims, we believe in the uh, eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah reveals Wala ahadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never wrong any soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never wrong any soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's al-adil. Allah is just in each and every single each and every single planning we have made in our life, every single decision where he has uh, decreed in our life, every single decision where he has destined in our life. When a person is able to digest that Allah would never wrong in my life, then that would alleviate away from him sorrow, anxiety, worries, depression, and distress. That even though your mind and my mind is unable to equip with the situation where we are in, we must bear in our hearts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just in whatever planning he has made. And the very dua for grief, sorrow, anxiety, worries, depression, and distress, it's a dua which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, Allahumma inni abaduka wa banu abadika wa banu amatika nasiyati biyadik Madin fiya hukmuk, idalum fi kadauk, as alukallahumma bikuli ismin huwalak, some maita bihi nafsak, au anzeltahu fi kitabik, au alamtahu ahadam min khalkik, au ista serta bihi fi il mirai bi indak, and tajal al kuruana rabi a kalbi. وَنُورَ الصَّدَرِ وَجَلَاءَ حُزْنِ وَذِحَابَ الْحَمِّ وَالْغُمِّ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّحِمِ This is a pretty long dua where you are able to extract it from uh, Sheikh Google. You can just uh, type in dua of grief. I would slowly explain to you piece by piece in order for me and you to appreciate and appreciate this particular dua. When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Allahumma inni abdu," O Allah, I am your slave. Wa abdu, son of your slave. Wa banu amatik, son of your maid servant. Na siyati biyadik, my forelock is in your hand. Ma din fiya hukmuk. Your command over me is forever executed. 
Adalu fi qadauk. Now underline this particular part of this dua. Your decree over me is always just. This is very important. That what Allah have decreed in my life and what Allah have decreed in your life, Allah subhanahu wa taala, we must we must embrace that situation where we are in. During the situation, is during the situation is where when we start to blame. Things around us, including myself, that's norm of a human being. You know, why me? Why not him? Why is it happening to me? Why is not happening to her? This is when we, as Muslim, I, as a Muslim, I just need to submit and surrender my will to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That His decree over me is always just. As alu kabi kulli ismin huwala. I ask you by every name belonging to you, some may tabihi nafsuk which you have named yourself. أو أنزلته في كتابك أو revealed in your book أو علمت أحد من خلقك أو you have taught to any of your creation أو استأثرت به في علم غيب عندك أو you have preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you أن تجعل القرآن ربيع كل قلبي you make the Quran the life of my heart ونور الصدر the light of my breast وجلاء حزني and the departure for my sorrow وذهاب حمي and the release for my anxiety. But Allah سبحانه وتعالى will take away and when a person recites this dua, when a person recites this dua, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will remove his distress and grief, grief and replace it with joy. He asks, O Messenger of Allah, should we learn this? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala and who asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the continuation of this hadith, he states that, Ya Rasulullah, should we learn this? He said, of course, everyone who hears it should learn it. Now, this is the, this is the medication for our illness of our heart. That many amongst us, including myself, stage after stage, time after time, second after second, you and I will definitely going to surmount one of the, those obstacles. And when we are surmounting those obstacles is when we need to articulate this dua with full of conviction to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the reliever and releaser of all our problems and what He does in our life is full of justice. Right? Next, solution number two. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge which encompasses or encircle everything. This is something where many amongst us are unable to wrap our mind around. And something where the scholars have stated in the different books on the topic of Qadr and Qadr. And many amongst us, including you know, we have difficulty in wrapping this particular topic around our mind, which is Allah has the knowledge of the past, He has the knowledge of the present, and He has the knowledge of the future. And this is something where the last part where I've just stated, He has the knowledge of the future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows why certain things will not occur. And if it were to occur, He knows what will be the result of it. This is the infinite probability of circumstances. When it happens, he knows why it happens and when it doesn't happen and if even it doesn't happen, he knows of the knowledge if that will take a detour. So this is where we as Muslim, we need to have in mind with good faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge. And this brings me to the most amazing ayah in Surah Al-An'am, in chapter number uh, verse number 59, when Allah said, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِيهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَهَرِ وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And with him are the keys of the unseen. None knows them except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows what is on the land and in the sea. Not a leaf falls but that he knows it and no grain is there within the darkness of earth and no moist or dry things but that 
it is written in the clear records of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having to believe that what Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the affair and he knows the knowledge better than us and leave the affair in his hand that he knows the best in my life and in your life. That is solution number two, that Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. Now, solution number three, Allah is wise in all his de decision. Believing in Allah's wise decision allows your heart to rest. Now, let me give you an example from a very beautiful chapter of the Quran where it describes about an entire life of a prophet, which is the life of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Now imagine if you and I were given the access to rewrite the life of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam before he was born on this earth. Means you have the you have the access to get your hands towards the script of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. And you are reading through the script that this boy is going to be the subject of conspiracy in his family. And this boy is going to be bullied by his own siblings. And this boy is then is going to be thrown into a well. And then you're asking a question that why is this boy is going to be the subject of conspiracy? Why is this boy is going to be uh is going to be the center of bullying, bullying for his his brother, his siblings. And why is this boy is then being later thrown into a well by his brothers? And then uh, a businessman picks this boy up and then sells him as a slave. And then later he need to go uh, into the prison. He's being incarcerated into the prison. You will find that one episode after another episode his life is full of problems and he needs to, to 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 climb so much of obstacles and then while you're reading thinking that i need to change this and change that and change this now if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed those changes to happen would the story of nabi yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam would pan out how his ending would be just let's rewind back <clears throat> to further appreciate the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam would not be in the subject of conspiracy he would not he would not have been the center of bullying of uh, for, for, uh, with his siblings and if he wouldn't be the center of bull bullying with his siblings he would not then had been thrown into the well. If he if he had not been thrown into the well, he would not been picked up by the businessman. And if he had not been picked up by the businessman, he would not have been sold as a servant into the palace of Egypt. And if he would not have been sold into the palace of Egypt, he would not been seduced by the wife of the ruler and if he had not been seduced by the wife of the ruler he would not be incarcerated into the prison and if he had not been incarcerated into the prison he would not have discovered that he had the ability to interpret the dreams and if he would not have discovered that he is able to interpret the dreams he would not been able to assist the ruler with the dream where the ruler had and if he had not assisted to interpret the dream of the ruler he would not have he would not have been able to save the entire egypt from famine and if he have not been able to save the entire Egypt into famine, he would not be appointed as a treasurer. And if he had not been appointed as a treasurer, he would not have the ability to invite his family from Palestine and to live happily ever after in Egypt. This is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have literally designed and engineered the life of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. These are wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where many amongst us would not be able to wrap the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it hereby brings me, it reminds me of a story between a minister and a king. The minister is like you, right? They, he loved to pray and he used to dedicate and devote his action for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he used to have this profound statement of his where he states khiratun fi ma yakhtarullah goodness is in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses goodness lies in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses so whenever he comes into a junction of decision and when he makes the decision he states he will always say that goodness is it lies in the uh, choices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As such, this minister was very closely associated with the king of that particular uh, nation. And this king used to also have high regards for this minister. And always they would chit chat frequently. And one fine day, while the king out of love was cutting some fruits for this minister, he accidentally slid the knife into his finger and when he slid the knife into uh, the king's finger his, his own finger the minister on the flip side while he, he saw that the the the, minister, the the king's finger has been uh, cut then the minister immediately stated his profound statement goodness is in the choice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and immediately the king got offended with that statement anyone would get offended isn't it because right now the king is in pain and here by the king states that are you gloating at my misery that i my, my, my hand is bleeding and hereby you're saying that this is goodness for me and he got angry he got frustrated with the statement of the minister he immediately imprisoned the minister into into the prison and while the minister is walking into the prison what did he say again goodness lies in the choices of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even then, he states that goodness is, it, it lies in the choices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while the king is trying to understand that this guy, I'm putting, I'm imprisoning him, and yet he's saying this statement. And this king have this habit of going for hunting. And whenever he goes for hunting, he had the minister besides him. But now that he's being imprisoned, so he goes alone. While he was doing his routine hunting, what happens is what happened was the animal jumps out from the territory, from his own territory, from his own kingdom, and it goes to the territory of another village. And what was taking place in that village was they were having droughts for years. Basically, they didn't have, uh, they didn't receive rain for quite some time. And in their custom, in order for the rain to come down, basically for the rain to come down, they would need to sacrifice a foreigner. And what happened was the villagers were unaware that this was the king of the nation. When they saw that this individual entered to their territory, they immediately fed that they chained him. Right? They brought him in front of the idol and they were about to sacrifice him. And when they were about to sacrifice him, they realized that the, this man is, is uh, in their version, in their, in their opinion, this man is handicapped because his hand got cut. Remember the incident which took place in front of the minister where he, he, he accidentally slid the knife. So if when they sacrifice to their their idols, they need to sacrifice a man who is absolute. Basically, he does not have any uh, any sort of uh, uh, injury in, in 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 the person's body. So this is when they uh, release him from the chain and freed him from the uh, ritual of theirs. And the king was so happy, and he returned back to the palace and immediately approached to the minister and then he embraced that you were right goodness lies in the choice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he started to have a conversation with the minister i do understand the reason behind uh, 
the reason behind cutting my finger but i still can't understand the reason behind me the king decreeing upon you to be imprisoned and then look at how beautiful a person of wisdom is because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise wise and when the person totally believes in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would then discover the wisdom of knowledge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he then explains to the king by stating that who would always accompany you for hunting he said your good self and when they chained you and they realized that you had injury in your body who would they have replaced you in behalf of yourself he said myself you minister so this is where i said that goodness lies in the choice of allah for allah pleasing that individual in that prison the minister in the prison was to save him from getting into those tragedy this is why here he stated that goodness lies in the choice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believing that allah's decision over you is more wiser than our own plans this is solution number 3 and solution number 4 where many amongst us shy away is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah yaf'alu ma yasha allah does what he wills allah does what he wills whose earth is this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala earth whose body are we borrowing is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala body whose soul are we carrying in this body is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soul this is why we need to know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he wills even though it is the most impossible thing for you and i including myself to digest we need to realize that this life is given from him and this life will be taken away from him and in between it for certain times allah give us choices and certain other times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala steer us away from our choices even though we might dislike at that point of time as we start to grow out from it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us to the best to to the best decision and this is the same thing where when maryam had a uh, uh, zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam had a question with maryam and maryam then responded to him to her and then later on maryam alayhi salatu wasalam also had the the same question that that mind boggling question how is it possible for her to carry a child for her to bore a child when no man have touched her she, she she didn't keep in contact because we know that how can a woman conceive is when a, a husband and wife have, uh, will 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 go through the biological interaction between them but without going through the process of marriage without her interacting biologically with a with a husband how was it possible for her to conceive this is when allah states profoundly in surah ali imran qalat rabbi anna yakunu li walad wa lam yamsasni bashar qala kadhalika allahu yakhluqu ma yasha idha qada amran fa inna ma yakulu lahu kun fayakun she said how is it possible for me to bear a child when no man have ever touched me allah responded i do what i will it is this world belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as such allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he wills so in summary we need to understand that when allah reveals also the summary can be summarized from a beautiful verse from the quran when allah states in surah tabab in chapter uh, surah 64 ma asaba min musibatin illa bi idnillah wa may yu'min billahi yahdi qalbah wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim no calamity ever be false unless it be by allah's leave and whosoever has faith in allah allah directs his heart along the right path allah has knowledge of every single thing right and belief necessitates affirmation of divine unity affirmation of divine unity necessitates submission to allah and submission to allah necessitates reliance on allah and reliance on allah necessarily leads to happiness in this world and the next hopefully what i've shared with you right it is good for me and good for you beneficial for me and beneficial for you no that at the end of the day is for us to continuously increase in our faith and have conviction with our maker 
that what he has penned out for us is always the best and believe in him that when we have strong faith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be closer to us look at Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam when he was just an infant and when his sister placed him in a basket that 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 sea where he was placed into did not harm him at all where else when Fir'aun was at his full strength and he was literally marching through in between the Red Sea and he was at his full strength he was he, 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 and he, he, he was very strong and his, he was equipped with resources However, that same sea harmed him and took his life away. The point here is when a person, when a person is weak, however, he has his own weaknesses and he's weak, yet he has strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing would harm him. And when a person is physically strong and he's equipped with his resources and does not have much faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then nothing can assist you against your maker because at the end of the day, faith determines the action of an individual and particularly the iman towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hopefully, this session of mine today is beneficial for you and beneficial for me. Whatever goodness solely lies in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever evil I will have to ascribe to myself and the shaitan akun matasma'un. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfir wa atubu ilaik Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Asri inna l-insana labi khusr illa al-ladhina aman wa amidu salihat wa tawasabil haqq wa tawasabil sabat Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh